Hello. Welcome to this webinar. We are about to start. Let's wait for the last people. You can uh, rename yourself, adding your structure or organization to your name. So please introduce yourself in the chat. Tell us where you write from. Hello, welcome to those who join us. We want to make sure everyone has arrived. Please add the name of your organization next to your name. You can introduce yourself in the chat. You can introduce yourself in the chat and your project if you have one. For those who need a translation, there is an interpretation in English, French, and Arabic. You can click and choose your language. Let's wait for a couple more minutes. This is the second webinar in a series of six. The next webinar is on February 14th. The first one was in December. It was about the training on food sustainability. You can uh, find it on our YouTube channel if you want. Uh, this webinar is about to start. I will ask you if you can turn off your microphone just to have a better sound for all of us. There will be some time for questions at the end. Please introduce yourself in the chat. You can present your organization and your project as well. There will be some time for questions at the end. You can listen to this webinar in French, English, and Arabic. To choose your language, you can click below and choose if you want to listen to this in French, English, or Arabic. Please add the name of your organization next to your name. Thank you for being with us today. There are people listening from 30 different countries. You can watch the video of this webinar later on on our YouTube channel. Let's Food Ideas. Let's start.
rename yourself with your organization name. You can choose the language of your webinar below between English, French, and Arabic. Let's start with Louison. Um, my name is Anna Fauché. I'm the director and co-founder of the Let's Food Association. We launched this series of webinars about the food challenges in the Mediterranean area. There was a first webinar in December on food training. You can find it on our YouTube channel. This is number two. It's about raising food sustainability awareness among children. There are some people who are going to talk to you today, and I will also present our, our work here at Let's Food. It's an associ a French association. We want to help territories in France and abroad to build together sustainable, resilient food systems. They have three different parts. First, helping communities. Second, inventory of initiatives and publications on the food challenges. So we have this platform called Let's Food Ideas. It is mentioned in the, in the chat. Number three, training and capacity building. We teach in universities uh, for technicians and local people with the idea uh, that to build sustainable systems, we need sustainable skills in the territories. That's about us. So we're a team of five people. Louison Lanson, who co-founded the association uh, with me. And there are also Camille, Anel, and Len Lana. There's a bureau, an administration board, and volunteers who help us on many missions. We prepare this webinar with three partners, the UNESCO Chair in World Food Systems. They also offer a training for sustainable food. There's a training in Montpellier. We studied there with Louison. They help society towards a sustainable food. Number two, need a laboratory on ecological transition. They do training education and raise awareness in the Mediterranean. Number three, the French Ministry of Foreign and European Affairs. They help French territories in decentralized cooperation and also with uh, funding. These are our partners. If you want to know more about what they do, they did a presentation in the first webinar, so you can watch it on our YouTube channel. Why this series of webinars on the Mediterranean? Uh, we've been working on this um, territory for years with first the project Let's Food Cities. And we worked in Marseille and Montpellier, and it was an international project. Then we had this Copalim project. Uh, this was about cooperation between Montpellier, Fez, Grenoble, and Sfax, among others. And then the Medalim study from the UN Food and Agriculture Organization. We worked with 22 countries around the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, we did an inventory of uh, solidary and sustainable food initiatives. So we wanted to build on these initiatives and public policies and funding partners. So we try to link these 
partners. This is why we are here too. Uh, let's share our contact information and initiatives. What are our goals in the Mediterranean? We want to speed up a dietary transition in the Mediterranean. We want to support committed local actors. We want to share best practices. For instance, we believe in decentralized cooperation. The goal is to create and launch partnerships to identify funders for your project. This is our webinar program. Uh, this is number two. There are six. Today it's about children awareness on sustainable food. Next one on February 14th is about reducing food waste. Then we have number four on March 13th about producing local high quality, quality food. Number five, market opportunities for local farmers. And number six in May, fighting food insecurity. I would like to welcome all of you who joined us. I would like you, if possible, to name yourself, but also add the name of your structure, organization. You can introduce yourself in the chat and tell us about who you are and about your initiative or project. Before we start, uh, here are a few definitions. We talk about a local food system. What is it? Uh, how to reduce waste, the governance. Just to remind you that you have interpretation in Arabic, English, and French below. So the local food system is about how to have uh, extensive diversified firms, autonomous in agroecology, how to develop local food systems and producers. We want to help uh, intermediate, make them aware of the local intermediate. We want to support change in food habits according to what we need and what we want. Uh, local food without pesticides, less meat, if possible. We want to have less food waste. How can we reduce waste? Or how can we reuse or recover waste? We want to product, protect soils maybe by recovering waste as well. We want to have natural soils. We want to help new farmers have an installation. And we would like a new uh, local food governance to help all stakeholders to participate and also the citizens with the appropriate uh, local policies. What are sustainable food systems? We worked with the definitions from Nicola Brecas below, who worked with the um, UN Food Organization. We want to be able to assess if a system is sustainable or not. So a sustainable food system wants to protect the environment without burning out non-renewable resources, without pollution if possible. We want to have everyone access to enough food that is healthy, nutritious, and culturally acceptable. We want to uh, rely on an economical inclusive system with new jobs for everyone. And we want to have 
a good value chain as well. We don't want the producers to suffer from it. We want to promote social cohesion and we want to build trust in the system and allow citizens to participate in its evolution with uh, public policies, for instance. Today's topic is about raising food sustainability awareness among children. We want to introduce this with our work. First, children are tomorrow's eaters. The different levers uh, present the local policies and also an overview of um, the policies locally and in the world. And what are the levers to raise awareness? School canteen parents. So some information to start with. There are some publications that you can find online. about uh, how students can uh, still be hungry in 2024. So these are the resources that you can find on our website. First, tomorrow's eaters and the levers of transformation. Here are some figures. How things have changed. These are figures about France, but it can be true in other countries. Since 1960, households spent less and less of their consumption expenditure on food. It was 20% in 2014 versus 35% in 1960. So this has an impact on quality, of course. We notice uh, that there are more lipids that are being eaten and also an increase of ready-to-eat products, 80% of our foodstuff here in France. And also more people tend to eat out and uh, there are many fast foods uh, among children and teenagers especially. There is also the expansion of mass distribution, which is in progress in many countries where uh, people can access many uh, highly processed products, which has an impact on everyone's conception uh, among children also. Uh, the number of obese children and teenagers in the world has increased, has been multiplied 10 times since 19. 75. So here. here are some levers to raise awareness, school, canteen, parents, and the food environment. This is what we work on when we are in the territories. We've been working in 20 different places in the world. And we noticed some interesting school programs. with new learning strategies, for instance. It, leaves, it gives access to food gardens, from, for instance, and also to um, kitchen cooking activities. Uh, we worked on nutritious programs in the schools as well. For instance, in Polynesia or in New Caledonia, where uh, people tend to be more obese. Number two, school canteen. It's about food safety for the children. So, some territories don't have a school canteen. So that's interesting too. Uh, we want to promote uh, local 
food and local employment. So this happens quite a lot in Europe. Here in France, uh, mass catering is being directly managed up to 60% in France and 40% is indirect. So this enables school to choose their own product. Number three, the parents. Studies show that if you act on the children, this has a good impact on the beliefs, knowledge, and on the purchase of the parents. It's what is called reverse socialization. So we see that the parents' behavior changes. They buy more organic products and higher quality products. Uh, people often tend to choose organic products for their children. So it's a way of changing purchasing habits. Number four, the food environment. Of course, there is an influence from the food environment. What does the child see? What does he have access to? In Mexico and Chile and in French Polynesia, we saw that uh, some projects try to reduce advertisement and snacks around schools, for instance. Or in Chile, they worked on uh, taking out the cartoon characters that are on cereals, boxes, to try to reduce their influence on children because these are um, more fat and more sugary. So there are many initiatives on our platform, Let's Food IDs. You can uh, find them there. I won't go too much into detail, into this card, but this map, but you can find it in our publication on school canteens. So canteens, and school are not systematic in all countries. Uh, the competence depends on the country. In France, for instance, school is mandatory up to the age of 16. In 2019, half of the children had lunch at school two-thirds in of students in secondary school, so it can be a big level of transformation. In Mexico, in Mexico and in Chile, there are school canteens. In Morocco, they have canteens in primary school, but it's primarily in rural areas, in boarding school, for instance. In Iran, uh, there is no school canteen. There are different uh, systems in other countries. Children live, leave early and they go and have lunch at home. Uh, in South Africa, there is a school meal program, school nutrition national program in Durban, they, they are more advanced. They want to buy local products to offer them to children. So there are many interesting and different initiatives, but relatively less canteens. Let's go around the Mediterranean. Here's an overview. In Albania, uh, there is collective uh, food is given in public institution. It's the competent, it's the state's competence. But sometimes it's hard to go to local products. Uh, sometimes cities step in and they offer snacks, for instance. In Jordan, there are canteens only in boarding schools and private schools. Same in Bosnia 
Herzegovina, in Lebanon and Gaza, there are no school canteens. In Turkey, there are some only in boarding schools and private schools. So it's a state's competence. Sometimes cities can uh, offer snacks. Other initiatives in the Medellin uh, projects. Uh, in France, there is this EGALIM law, which helps and uh, makes it mandatory to have schools offer organic food, uh, a certain percentage of uh, organic food. For instance, in Dordogne department, they have 100% uh, meals that are 100% uh, organic. Same in Grenoble. In Montpellier uh, as well, they have a lot of uh, local food with different programs. For instance, my canteen differently. There are many uh, supportive actors locally to help with uh, specific programs. In Italy, there are some projects as well. We'll have an example later on. Uh, in the Siena province in Torino or Milan, uh, they want to reduce meat and have local products. In Turkey, in the Izmir Metropolitan Municipality, they offer local snacks such as milk and they raise awareness among children. You can find this uh, on our platform. Uh, please introduce yourself in the chat if you have not done so already. We'll have a five minute break for the interpreters and we'll meet you here in five minutes. See you in a few minutes. Je vois qu'il y en a qui le font, mais n'hésitez pas effectivement à vous présenter. L'objectif de ce webinaire, c'est de partager les expériences. Donc, n'hésitez pas à nous dire ce que les programmes ou les initiatives que vous menez en faveur de la sensibilisation des enfants sur les enjeux d'alimentation et d'agriculture durable. Vous pouvez aussi vous renommer et ajoutez le nom de votre structure à côté de votre nom, ce qui facilite les échanges. Et donc, ce webinaire est enregistré. Il sera ensuite en replay sur notre chaîne YouTube Let's Food Cities. J'attends quelques minutes de plus et je présente ensuite nos intervenantes. Très bien. Bon. On reprend. Euh, pour celles et ceux qui nous rejoignent, n'hésitez pas à vous présenter. Euh, donc, on accueille aujourd'hui quatre intervenantes. 
donc, Christina Soussen, donc du service Food Policy de la Direction de l'Éducation de la Commune de Milan, à qui je vais donner la parole en premier. On aura ensuite une vidéo. Donc, euh, Francesca Sanchez, qui s'excuse de ne pas pouvoir être là, mais qui nous a donc fait une vidéo. Euh, elle est du Barcelona Public Health Agency. Et donc, elle va nous présenter une initiative de Barcelone. Euh, Marjorie Constantin, qui est doctorante en pédagogie alimentaire et qui représente la direction de la politique alimentaire de la ville de Montpellier. Et enfin, adjointe du pôle éducation, formation, recherche de Nid Méditerranée, donc nos partenaires, et qui interviendront donc à, à, à deux avec Karine Voyer, qui est enseignante en sciences et vie de la terre dans le second degré. Voilà pour nos intervenants. Je vais directement laisser la parole à Christina. Merci encore. Bonjour, bonjour. Je vais parler en anglais parce que je crois que c'est mieux pour la compréhension de la. Uh, de la présentation. Donc, um, thank you very much for the invitation. Sorry for the camera because it's not working, so you cannot see me, but uh, uh, I'll try to speak slowly so the translation could be um, adapted. So, first of all, thanks for this invitation. Uh, I'm Christina Sosan. I work in the food policy office of the city of Milan which is uh, under the education department, and I particularly deal with projects related to school canteens. Um, uh, the presentation of uh, Anna gave us many, many inputs, and uh, I start uh, just saying some words on the city of Milan uh, food policy and uh, um, the fact that school meals become very important also in our work uh, toward the uh, transformation of our food system. So in 2015, we had a food policy we created, we approved, the city approved a food policy, the city council uh, with five priorities where school meals, uh, as I said before, uh, is one of the main uh, activity. Uh, Um, we also approved in 2015 the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact that probably many of you have heard and also some of the city that you represent here or that you are from here, as I saw in the chat, are part of. And that actually was uh, the opportunity for all cities to engage and um, try to Uh, have a broad picture of uh, what is needed to transform and to change the food system, starting from a different point of view, like someone started from school meals, some others started from food waste, some other from uh, sustainable production or um, uh, other, other um, specific uh, objectives. So uh, this was the beginning, thanks. Yes, you could, you could go to the next, yes. Uh, school meals for us uh, means a lot of things. Um, we um, uh, decided to focus our uh, job, especially on procurement. The city of Milan, as Anna said before, as a um, municipal agency for school meals, for uh, school canteens. So it's a public in-house company owned by the city of Milan. So that allow us to uh, have a very uh, important uh, work on school canteens. As many of, I mean, most of the cities in Milan, most of the schools in Milan are served by uh, this uh, service provider, which is Milano Ristorazione. So kids from zero to uh, more or less 14 eat at school in Milan and uh, we serve them through Milano Ristorazione. Uh, in these years, in the last years, in the last few years, uh, since uh, 2015, especially uh, during, during uh, the Universal Exposition, we started to increase our educational activities, trying to focus uh, on different stakeholders and on different targets. 
uh, translator, is that okay? I hope so. So, uh, as I said, uh, we have different targets and we saw that, of course, the technique and uh, the objective are different for each of them. So we do a lot of information for parents and citizens. We are trying to work on education for children and students. And we are also working on training for chef and company staff. So uh, according to that, we are developing different tools uh, during uh, these, mm, these years. And particularly, uh, we concentrated on education, on food education and on the definition of some tools, some like kind of toolkits that we could give to parents and children uh, to play and to learn more uh, about the food that they eat at school, the, um, the main ingredients, but also the importance of eating lots of vegetables instead of meat, or for instance, the importance of reducing food waste. So to um, increase their um, positive habits uh, and attitude towards food and towards food consumption. Um, so uh, you see here three publications that we started in 2020. Uh, the first one was dedicated to healthy diets. So we promoted some ingredients and also some games that the kids could do. The second one was related to how can we uh, avoid food waste at school. The third one actually is more oriented to parents, but also to, to students. Uh, in order to understand where we can buy local food and where are the farmer's market and also the farms that produce local food that we can go and um, buy. Uh, go ahead with the next one. Okay. Um, uh, another tool that we uh, think that is very, very important is the menu. So uh, we um, produce a menu twice per year, which is seasonal. We print the menu, we print out the menu for all the kids and we distribute, we deliver the, the, the menu at school. So each kid could have its own menu. So the family receives the menu. And also uh, you see here this sheet. On the other side, you see menu inverno, it's winter menu. And on the other side, it's la creatività, which is creativity for dinner. So we give them some advices for dinner, for what they can, they can eat uh, or the parents can prepare according to what they have eaten in the, in the day at school. And also we provide some information on healthy diets, on uh, sustainable diets, on all the practices that we have done towards sustainability. For instance, uh, the results that the city of Milan with Milano Ristorazione has achieved in order to decrease the GAG equivalent emissions on their menu, on, its, on our menu, uh, reducing meat. So since 2015, we are participating to this program and we monitored how our menu changed in the years, in, in this like last seven, eight years. Uh, changing the, um, the type of, of product uh, that we serve. So we decrease the amount of meat uh, that was um, inside the menu. We uh, increase the number of legumes and vegetables. And that actually gave us the opportunity to reach like 42% uh, less uh, of GAG equivalent emissions. So another important thing is the monitoring of the actions and the communication of the results that we have achieved to parents, but to the, also to the public in general, to citizens in general. We also do uh, a lot of uh, kind of communication or awareness raising on two specific dates. We selected the, the 16th of October as World Food Day and also the 5th of uh, February as National Day against food waste. So we tried also with these uh, dates to try to um, uh, cover some issues that can be repeated year by year to families, but also to children in order to make them more aware and also to make these concepts, these ideas as like the everyday life and everyday uh, attitude. Um, 
I think there's one more or no, maybe, no, okay. So these are uh, the main activities that I wanted to show you. We are also participating to many projects like School Food for Change uh, with many other um, cities like uh, Anna said before, Dordogne, and um, together with the aim of uh, promoting the transition of our food system through school meals. So um, that is why some cities are working a lot on uh, changing the um, sustainable practices in the menu and many other cities are working also on creating educational path that could uh, create awareness uh, among children, among parents, but also among educators which are uh, and, and among chef, which are actually another very important, uh, other very important actors that actually deal uh, every day with kids. So the words, their attitude toward the food and toward healthy food is very, very important. So I'm, I'm very, I'm sad that I cannot stay until the end, but if you have any questions, you could write, uh, I write the email of the Milan Food Policy in the chat. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Christina, pour cette présentation. Euh, alors, effectivement, Christina ne peut pas rester jusqu'au bout, mais elle va donner son mail si vous avez des questions. So, in fact, uh, Christina could not stay until the end, but if you have questions, you can uh, ask them in the chat. So, please, do so. Uh, now, we are going to watch a video from an experience that happened in Barcelona. Uh, there's the translation uh, going on. Public Health Technician of the uh, Public Health Agency of Barcelona. In next, I will present the program More Healthy and Sustainable School Canteens, the so-called MEMS program. It is a program led by the Public Health Agency of Barcelona an urban food policies area of the local government of Barcelona, with the support of the Barcelona Education Consortium. The work team is made up of technicians from Public Health Agency of Barcelona, urban food policies area, community health nurses, external providers, a dietitian and a nutritionist, and a technical secretary of the program that carries out the follow-up of the program. A transformation of the school canteen model and the food model is necessary to address the current existing problems related to childhood obesity and the impact of carbon footprint on climate change. As the foundational idea, a change or a transformation of the school canteen model and the food model in general is needed. The current globalized food model has negative impacts on job insecurity, loss of fertile soils, obesity and cardiovascular diseases, greenhouses gases, species extinction, and uh, the power of big companies. It is responsible for the health, climate, social, and ecological crisis. Uh, it represents a disconnection with the culture of the land in farming and traditions, and implies a perception of food as a commodity and food as a business and not a basic right. This program is not an isolated program that is carried out in schools, but it is part of a broader project that includes two large blocks of action. On the one hand, programs to promote healthy, safe, and sustainable eating habits that are carried out in the classroom. And on the other hand, actions linked to uh, school menus and the transformation of school canteens. Likewise, and to complement these two blocks of action, uh, other city council programs and actions are also carried out, uh, for example, micro networks. And the main objective of the program is to promote changes in the school canteen so that it became healthier and more sustainable, safe and unfair. That, uh, that is to say that it takes care of uh, the health of people, territories and the planet at the same time. The program uh, takes uh, place in the educational centers of the city of Barcelona 
and uh, gets involved, uh, get involved uh, different agents, the management team of the school, catering management companies, monitoring companies, uh, teachers and families. Uh, it is addressed to public and um, private subsidized educational schools of Barcelona uh, with a preschool, primary and secondary school uh, education. And uh, the implementation may require more than one uh, school year, depending on the action plan decided uh, by the school. Uh, the specific objectives uh, are to promote both in the school community and at home a healthier, sustainable, safe and fair diet, increasing the consumption of uh, plant-based protein and reducing the consumption of uh, sugary, processed products and red meat. To promote changes uh, in the management model where structural aspects of food procurement and kitchen management are dealt with, such as the equipment uh, and kitchen staff available or the food item allocated from the price of the school menu. To offer training, advice and support as well as support materials to educational centers so that they can identify uh, and implement possible improvement actions and uh, to encourage the consumption of local and seasonal products in the school canteen and raise awareness of the uh, need of strengthening the local economy of our farming and contribute to the good health of our ecosystems. The project consists of five phases carried out by each participating school. Uh, in the first phase uh, uh, is the registration in the program by the schools at the beginning of the course, and uh, there is a first information session. In the second phase, a previous questionnaire is uh, administered that serves to make the diagnostic report of the, the starting state of the school. Training is carried out uh, for the project, uh, for the project's key agents, which are school management, managing entity of the school canteen, families and canteen supervisors. In the third phase, each school prepares its action plan for the transformation of the school canteen, including nutritional aspects, food proximity, sustainability, etc., based on the possible improvements identified by the school. In the fourth phase, uh, the school implements the action plan uh, it has proposed. Uh, at this moment, uh, based on the training request uh, made by the schools participating in the project, for example, uh, to learn more about seasonal foods. Some monographic sessions are held for the schools on some of the most requested topics. And finally, in the fifth phase, uh, at the end of the course, the evaluation and the assessment of the action plan implementation is carried out. The next course, um, the school starts this process again, incorporating new improvements uh, to move forward in the transformation of its canteen. And uh, also through, uh, through all the course, uh, the school has the support of the program's uh, technical secretary. Um, this slide shows the four agents involved in the transformation of school canteens uh, mentioned above, uh, as well as some examples of monographic sessions uh, carried out uh, at the request of uh, schools, uh, such as the calculation of the food item, for example. In the framework of the program, uh, many resources and informative support material have been designed to give the schools support. These materials can be found on the Public Health Agency of Barcelona website, uh, such as fax, for example. Um, this program uh, has several scientific publications. And in addition, some reports and informative uh, documents have been produced for citizens uh, and uh, also the program has received a national award from the Spanish Ministry of Health, Consumption and Social Welfare. Um, in a total of uh, 29 schools in nine of uh, the 10 districts 
of Barcelona are currently participating in the project. And finally, for further information and questions, uh, you can contact us uh, at the program email you can see in this slide. Thank you very much uh, for, for your attention. But uh, if you have uh, some questions, you can also uh, send them to us. So next we go to the next uh, stakeholder, Marjorie Constantin, who has a PhD in food education and is head of food policy at the city of Montpellier. Uh, hello to everyone. I'm a third year uh, PhD student. I work in the laboratory ERAS. So we, I have a thesis with RIT Research, uh, which is co-financed with the city uh, of uh, Montpellier, which has a, a food policy uh, very positive. We want to raise awareness in children on food uh, sustainability. Uh, we worked I worked in a mediation, so here's the context. Here's the context. Um, Montpellier is an experimental city. Uh, we signed a pact. Since 2016, we worked on a program called My Canteen Differently. It is an innovative uh, systemic approach. We want to make children informed actors of a future uh, sustainable food system. So first we need to buy uh, sustainably. We want to uh, produce food uh, traditionally and there is a, an awareness program. And also there is a solitary price for the meals at school. And we work with a, a participative uh, governance. There is a, a food at school committee and we worked on different projects. Uh, the program My Canteen Differently has been uh, studied uh, by uh, researchers at the CIRAD. And so we worked on uh, information and communication sciences. We want to explain better uh, things to children and agents and parents how can we uh, what are the disadvantages and advantages of uh, this program in 2026 we want to create a food city in montpellier so my thesis in information and communication sciences is about food education and pedagogical support uh, of dietary transition in an approach of social inclusion with the idea of safeguarding children's health. So I want to show you this with pictures. Uh, my research is about uh, mediation. So how do we use our knowledge for children and with children? What is their logic? Uh, we talk about uh, children being actors, but they already are citizens today. And so it's very interesting of uh, looking at it the other way around, starting with the public. So this program, my canteen differently, already is uh, applied in other cities. But what happens when, when a child is sitting at school and waiting for, for their lunch? Do they know uh, how this food was made? So I worked from three phases. First, my canteen uh, differently. Then I went also to schools that are in uh, areas that are considered more difficult. And then I give children a diary 
where they have to to uh, to write uh, down what they ate that day. It's a way for them to express themselves related to food at school and in the family. So in the pictures that you see here, I could uh, study different documents. Uh, they have a little diploma to commit themselves. They have a hat they have to wear if they are in the canteen. So it's an object. Uh, children can become ambassadors and explain to other kids what they saw in the canteen. So they... Uh, what happens when a child it's at a self-service when they can choose what they eat when they can start with desserts, for instance. Uh, there are also some workshops around cooking at school. There are collaborative uh, workshops with the families. Uh, they can also work in gardens, plant their own food. Uh, they visit the central kitchen to see uh, how it works. I've been everywhere. I interviewed all the stakeholders to understand what are the different wishes and what the children uh, feel and how the children feel about it. Uh, I worked with agents, which are the people who see the children when they eat, they serve the food. So there can be uh, a gap if the ag agent doesn't know about uh, all the, the system that's behind it. Let's see the next slide. So from this experience and what I could observe, uh, I had gathered many information so uh, what I gathered is that to eat is something that's quite intimate and individual. So each child that comes in has a track of their sensitive experience and it's uh, very much on the individual level. Uh, same for the professionals, the editions. Uh, sometimes it's quite violent to listen to children relating their experience. So the idea is to give uh, the best practices. All these interactions are very interesting. Uh, there are some levers and there are some breaks as well. How can we uh, resolve those challenges through discussion? Uh, there's also a question of aesthetic. What does your food look like? Uh, we talk about what is culturally uh, acceptable or religiously. Not all children can uh, eat the same things. Uh, I like to think about uh, La Madeleine de Proust, uh, which is a literary image. It's like a, an old memory from your childhood about food. Uh, it leaves tracks. And so this happens when you're a child, but you can think about it the rest of your life. Let's think about all the experiences of the children, we can uh, deconstruct their perception and knowledge uh, that are far from the truth, but the children are aware of their environment. And so we can try to ask them, what would you like? What would you, what do you want to know? Uh, some children, told us about uh, what would you like to cook? And they said, we would like 
candy, but with no sugar. We would like fruit juice, but only one glass each. So they have some knowledge and they try to uh, add what they liked to negotiate uh, with the person in charge, uh, with the people in charge of food policies, for instance. Uh, some teachers want to create workshops about food, but it's hard for them with the many um, uh, policies that are around it. Uh, this morning, I was at the Municipal Council of Children, and this year there were questions about uh, vegetarian meals. Uh, there are two uh, vegetarian meals per week since this month. And so we want to inform uh, children, agents, and families about why we are doing this. So the question was, what do you know about uh, vegetarians? So they already know some things, but in conclusion, I want to say that a child said, it's also for the well-being of animals because uh, some of them are being stuck in small places and an adult ask, uh, what do you mean? And the child said, would you like to be stuck in a box? And a girl added, uh, animals who are not treated well, this won't make good meat. And if they are under pressure, uh, they might give us some illnesses. So where do, does this knowledge come from? Uh, there are different councils in four parts of the cities, but uh, it's very interesting to work from the speeches of all these stakeholders and see that we can deconstruct and build together uh, something else based on their knowledge and wishes. Thank you very much. Thank you for this feedback. Uh, if you have questions, please ask them in the chat because later on we'll have some time for questions. It's now time for Annabelle Matevon and Karine Boyer uh, to talk. Hello, my name is Annabelle Matevon. Karine and I are very happy to be here today. NEED is an association that started in Marseille and we want to help uh, in with the ecological transition in the Mediterranean. And we work with the uh, Ex-Marseille University uh, on uh, ecological transition in the Mediterranean. I won't talk too much about uh, what you said earlier already. Uh, about the importance of uh, sustainable food education among children. I want to be uh, more direct and present our project, what we did and what which programs uh, we used. Mm. Need wants to uh, train on the ecological transition, has to different acts, blocks of action, the creation of a place to raise awareness among the public, which will take place in Marseille in two years. It's not only about food, but also on other uh, ecological topics around the Mediterranean, where there will be brainstorming and uh, lots of information to learn more about the challenges in the Mediterranean. How to study the impacts of human activities. And 
we also want to show some organizations such as the one we heard about before, which are active in the Mediterranean, in, active in transition. So this will open in this museum will open in a few years, but we didn't, we're not waiting for it. We launched some programs already. So let's dive into the one I want to talk about. It's called Regeneration. It's for collectivities and structures to train and raise awareness with collaborative workshops among citizens. So we we want uh, participative transformation of educational facilities. The idea is to transform structures. Let's state an example. In France, uh, the cities are have the competence for primary and preschools. So these programs are made with the cities to launch a one-year program with the school. The final goal is to have the pupils and the school community uh, to have them present a roadmap about their school and they will present it to the city themselves. So it's uh, the drafting of a school transformation roadmap with the pupils. Uh, this is given to the city and it shows the city what children suggest uh, should be made, the changes that are needed, uh, be it uh, at the education, how the class works, what the children themselves should do. Uh, there are also a list of transformation that need the city to intervene. For instance, uh, suppliers, uh, catering, uh, work and transformation that need to be made in the buildings. So this takes, takes place in a year. There are some workshops and trainings, raising awareness among pupils, um, teachers, and all the people who are employed at the school. This workshop enables students and others to understand what is at stake in the Mediterranean. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, need is specialized in the Mediterranean environment. So we want to study the systems. Uh, what are they? What can we do to help? And we write down a diagnosis uh, with the help of need technical staff, uh, pupils observe, measure, calculate, write down facts about their school. What are their habits? How are the buildings? Uh, what are the, the education projects? So they start from this, these facts and they propose uh, solutions that are true for their own school and maybe not to the neighboring one. So among, in these workshops, we study food, of course, and we work with uh, the National Education Department. So we have uh, some uh, teachers that work in our department to uh, create and uh, present these workshops. So these workshops are approved by a scientific council and also by the education department. So that is, we're very lucky to have them with us. 
So this is the structure of our program. Uh, I will let Karine Boyer tell you more about uh, the content of our workshops about uh, food especially. For primary school pupils and also preschool, uh, those aged between three and uh, five years old. And let's not forget the pupils who stay a bit later after school in the buildings, because they also have uh, activities before or after school, or even at lunchtime, they can uh, participate in the workshops as well. Hello, my name is Karine Boyer. I'm a life sciences teacher in secondary school, and I also work with NEED uh, Mediterranean. Uh, I want to tell you about our food uh, workshop. Our goal is to have the pupils understand the scientific notions behind food. Uh, we want them to have a critical look on food and to uh, implement then their knowledge later on. The content of the workshop is uh, tailored to the age and to the school programs. So there are programs made for children aged between three and uh, 15. So we worked on sustainable development as well. There are many uh, sustainable goals. Uh, this will be presented in a future webinar as well. These are the uh, sustainable development goals from the uh, United Nations about consumption among others. We want pupils to be active and participate with different levers such as uh, games. You can learn through games. Then there is also the approach of the senses, not only the taste, but other senses as well. There's a workshop about the five senses. Once all the notions have been acquired, the pupil is ready to act. First, write down a diagnosis, as Annabelle explained earlier. Each child works on different um, performance indicators. Uh, what does uh, organic mean? What does local food mean? We want to uh, evaluate the percentage of food served in the canteen that is local or organic. We want to see what's in a menu, what's in a meal. Are these uh, sufficiently uh, different? Do they have enough vegetables or meat? Uh, how are the meals made? Are there already frozen food, uh, processed food? Is there a chef working there? What's his job? Uh, we organize visits of the kitchen in the canteen. What happens in a central kitchen? Children don't know how the meals are prepared. Are you welcome in the canteen? Uh, how is it to eat there? Is it too noisy? Is it a pleasure to eat there? And then last but not least, waste. What do we do with our waste? What are the waste quantities? What happens after we eat? We, eat? we meet different stakeholders 
to write down this diagnosis. Then the children think about the solutions. What can we uh, put in place? What are the solutions? Where does the food come from? Is there enough local or organic food? What can we do to make things better? There are some questions of equipment and projects as well. Is this solution implementable by myself as a citizen? Uh, can I put it into place into the whole school? Uh, can I work on this with my parents, my family? Can this be done in this in my uh, residential area? The, when it's uh, at the school level, we work with the city. Uh, at a secondary school, we work with the department or the region, depending on of the degree. Uh, when the children have come up with solutions, they have to prioritize them. Once the priority list is made, how can we implement them? Who do we need to make this come true? Uh, what is the budget for such or such a solution? Uh, then they have the help of adults, of course. Um, some solutions need time to be implemented. Which solutions are short term, which are longer term? In some schools, there was the wish to have different sizes for the plates, some small or big plates, depending if they are hungry or not. The child chooses their own plate. It depends on what they like as well. Then we tried to track down bread waste. Uh, lots, lots of bread are thrown away. So we monitored the evolution of bread waste in time. Uh, we installed some challenges among classes or among uh, ages to reduce this waste. We worked on projects about uh, sustainable food, such as dances, shows, uh, songs. So there are many, many solutions and they are really actors of the projects from the diagnosis to the implementation, be it short term or longer term, and the child is at the core of the project. Thank you. Thank you to all of you to all the speakers. I see you sent some questions uh, in the chat. But uh, are there um, some participants from other countries who would like to uh, present their project uh, in one minute? Darin, Darin, if you want to speak up. Hello. Can you hear me? Thank you. My name is Darin Dogi from uh, Tunisia, the National Institute of Consumption. I would like to tell you about our project about consumption in schools. We've been working on this for eight years with other partners. We go into schools in the whole of Tunisia, uh, in cities and also in rural areas and more remote schools. Uh, 
uh, we prepared and designed some documents. Uh, our topics are healthy and sustainable food, but also about waste and bread waste, which is very common in Tunisia. Uh, I would like to tell you about the labels on food. How can we compare different food products and read the labels? How to understand uh, what is butter, the lipids, uh, how to differ differentiate real butter from uh, industrial butter, how you should read the ingredients and the uh, different lipid, uh, vegetal lipids, uh, what's the difference between honey and sugar and glucose? We want to have uh, children look at products uh, critically. Uh, they are going in turn to have a great impact on their parents and families. So I hope they will have a good influence around them. I think my time is up. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, maybe some partnership can be uh, created with you if some people are interested. Yes, yes, please. Contact us uh, if you're interested, associations or other organizations. My email is in the chat, so I would like to share our experience. Would anyone else like to uh, present their uh, experience in uh, one minute? Maybe from Lebanon? Can, can you hear me? We are in France, so that's why I didn't want to talk before. I would like to present our, our program. Uh, we are supported by the French Agency for Development. I think this is interesting uh, for the ecological transition and Food, sustainable food. One of our activities is uh, communities for future, about uh, stakeholders on sustainable food and uh, fair trade. This community is totally free, and it's not a big effort to be become a, a member. There are many uh, young people who are uh, committed into this uh, community. There are also some teachers and people working at school, but there are not teachers, such as the canteen chef. So we have designed some uh, documents and resources for all the partners. So my name is Jorge Rodriguez, and I can share our resources with you and um, maybe uh, work on uh, workshops and different sessions to work together in favor of the ecological transition. Uh, in YouTube, uh, we will uh, present the uh, we will um, send the webinar and also your initiatives. So we'll get to the end. Um, it's almost the time for conclusion. I would like the speakers to bring their conclusion. Maybe uh, you, what are your keys to success or potential partnerships? or maybe answer uh, questions. First, let's hear from uh, Marjorie. Uh, 
the key to success is to talk to the public, start from the public actually to listen to them and use them as a starting point. So uh, we want them to be uh, actors that act individually, but also act at the level of communities. So sometimes it's hard to give the explanation in a good way. And uh, we want to listen to all the stakeholders and, and also listen to the providers and to the educational uh, personnel. Next, it's uh, Annabelle Stern. Just like uh, Marjorie, I wanted to tell you that uh, in all our actions, needs, actions, we want to have all the stakeholders in the territories to start uh, the actions uh, themselves. And we want to work with uh, people that are less favored and have them uh, come up with uh, solutions and try to go through uh, challenges and overcome them. Because we want to go beyond that and we want to decide on our own goals and results. Now it's time for uh, Karin to speak up. I agree with uh, the other speakers. I want to insist about the fact that the pupil, the child needs to be an actor. They have to feel um, useful. They have to, ha to feel that everything is still possible. They are the future generation. And even if they are uh, six year olds, they can do things, they can be actors. They have their role to play and they can uh, push the lines. That's what I want to insist on. Thank you very much to all the speakers. Uh, if you have other questions or if you want to uh, bring up uh, partnerships, a partnership, uh, please, uh, please get in touch with us. Uh, so next webinar, it's on February 14th. It will be about uh, how to fight, fight food waste. So here's the list of all the dates. Uh, there will be a document based on the webinar. So we want to shed a light on all the good initiatives and also uh, based on what you wrote in the chat. Uh, you can write your contact information in the chat, you can write to us or to the different actors that were took part in the webinar today. Uh, you can also uh, connect to our platform, Let's Food Ideas, and present and inform us about your project on the platform. This webinar will be shortly available in English, Arabic, and French on our uh, YouTube channel. Thank you to all the partners, interpreters, and participants. We'll see you next time on February 14th to talk about food waste. Thank you very much.